This video is brought to you by 28 Mobile. To get your hands on a Galaxy Note 4, visit 28mobile.com or the link down below. Hey what's up everyone, this is Dom, and today we are going to be comparing the Galaxy Note 4 to its predecessor, the Galaxy Note 3. Samsung made many improvements to the Note series where it counts, but are they enough to warrant an upgrade? Well without wasting any more of your time, let's go ahead and find out. The Galaxy Note line is one of the best-selling phablets on the market. It's packed with a ton of software features, a large display, and of course the S Pen which the Note line is famous for. The Galaxy Note 4 is a step up in all of these areas, but the most drastic difference is going to be found in its design. As you can see, the Note 4 has a premium metal frame which definitely is a welcome change here. Don't get me wrong, the Note 3's plastic build still made for a great device, but I don't think many are going to complain about the solid feel in the hands that the Note 4 provides. Also, if you'd like to check out my Galaxy Note 4 unboxing and first impressions video, be sure to check out the link below and subscribe to the channel for my full review in the future. Internally, Samsung has made some improvements to the Note 4 as well. As far as specifications go, the Galaxy Note 4 features a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 giving it 515 pixels per inch, a quad core 2.7 gigahertz Snapdragon 805 processor, 3 gigabytes of 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and a 3220 milliamp hour battery. The main benefits of the Note 4's internal specifications are going to be the stunning 5.7 inch Quad HD display and the Snapdragon 805 processor, which is actually two generations ahead of what's found in the Note 3. Don't get me wrong, the display on the Galaxy Note 4 is incredible. It looks absolutely phenomenal, but most people won't be able to tell a difference unless you put it side by side with the Galaxy Note 3 and really compare the pixels. But even even with the extra display resolution and sometimes questionable enhancement in performance, is this enough to leave behind the Note 3? As for the Galaxy Note 3, you'll find a 5.7 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 giving it 386 pixels per inch, a 2.3 gigahertz Snapdragon 800 processor, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and a 3200 milliamp hour battery. As you can tell, there are only a couple of major differences in specifications here, but as I've mentioned, the build quality may be enough on top of the already enhanced internal components. Again, the Note 4's metal frame makes a huge difference in the hands. Samsung has modernized the look and feel all around. The painted plastic frame and fake stitching on the Note 3 just seemed a bit out of date from the beginning. Though in my opinion, the chamfered edges found on the Note 4's design may become problematic over time as they are definitely prone to scratching. As far as layout goes, most things are going to be similar between these two devices. The front side of the Note 4 features an earpiece, the appropriate sensors, a 3.7 megapixel front facing camera, updated capacitive navigation buttons, and a home button with a built in fingerprint scanner. On the left side of the Note 4 you'll find its color matched volume rocker while the right side is home to the power button. On the top we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, IR blaster, and a small microphone while the bottom features a pair of microphones, a micro USB charging port, and the S Pen. Finally on the back side you'll find a 16 megapixel pixel camera, LED flash, heart rate sensor, and a small speaker. As mentioned, the Note 3 features a very similar layout, but being last year's model, there are some things missing. We have the volume rocker located on the left side, while the power button is on the right side. Along the top, you'll find the same 3.5mm headphone jack, IR blaster, and microphone, while the bottom is home to the S Pen, speaker, USB 3.0 port for charging, and a microphone. On the front, most everything is the same, but the Note 3 does not feature a fingerprint scanner and only has a 2 megapixel front facing camera. Around the back you'll find a 13 megapixel camera and an LED flash. While the Note 3 features a USB 3.0 charging port, it seems that the Note 4's micro USB 2.0 port is the clear winner. Samsung has included a special adaptive fast charging brick which will allow you to charge its battery from 0% to 50% in about 30 minutes. Battery life between the two is going to be fairly comparable, but stay tuned for my full thoughts on this coming up in the Note 4 review. In in terms of software, both devices are running Android with Samsung's TouchWiz overlay that brings along most of the features that make the Note series stand out. Having a stock or vanilla Android device is nice, but rather boring in my opinion. Android was made to be customized, and Samsung usually takes it to the max. With TouchWiz on the Note, there's pretty much something for everyone. But let's touch on some of those main points here. Multi-window is a very popular feature across large screen Samsung devices. On the Note 3, multi-window was pretty simple. 
cool, but this allows you to open up two windows at once and divide the screen to multitask. Multi-window on the Galaxy Note 4 has been massively improved with several new options available. With the Note 4, you can still access the traditional split screen mode with a wide variety of supported apps, but we also have the addition of pop-up screens, which is very similar to pen window found on the Note 3. Dragging from the top corner of most apps will allow you to resize the window and have it rest on top of other content. Along with that, you can minimize these pop-up screens and move them out of the way. Another neat feature is the ability to drag and drop content from one app to another using multi-window. So you can take a link or a picture and drag it across to another app and maybe send it off to a friend in a message. S Pen also brings some welcome changes. The design may be very similar, but its functionality has been expanded for the better. While the Air Command menu has been simplified on the Note 4, Samsung has added some new options. Both devices feature Action Memo, which will allow you to quickly jot down information and convert it into a usable format for many apps, and ScreenWrite, which transforms any screenshot into a canvas. But Samsung has ditched the S Finder, Pen Window, and Scrapbooker options in the Air Command menu and added Smart Select and Image Clip on the Note 4. Smart Select will allow you to quickly collect any information on the the screen. You can select an area, copy any associated text, or save the clip for use at a later time. It will then reside in a stack of movable clips which can be accessed and shared on the fly. While image clip is a new option in the Air Command menu on the Note 4, it's actually not a new feature. The same option was available on the Note 3 by pressing the S Pen button and selecting an area on the screen. On the Note 4 it functions the same but has a slightly updated interface. The S Pen also features double the sensitivity which is a welcome change for Avid S Note users, and we now have the ability to hold down the button on the side of the S Pen to select multiple items or text in a document which has seen some great improvements since the Note 3. The Note 4 features a new Flipboard powered briefing section which acts as a newsreader. Personally, I'd prefer to have a separate app instead of something integrated into the TouchWiz launcher, but luckily briefing can be disabled from the home screen settings. Remember those additional microphones found on the Note 4? Well, a Aside from assisting with noise cancellation for call quality, they also allow you to record multiple sources using the voice recorder app. Most people won't find much use for it, but if you're in a meeting, conference, or interview, the microphones will be able to distinguish up to eight different audio sources, which can be somewhat isolated after recording. Though this may only prove to be helpful for reference audio during interviews or small conversations. Overall, the software has been given a facelift. TouchWiz is being transformed into something that has a modern look to it and I am definitely a fan. Unfortunately, most of the differences mentioned up to this point are simply because of the software running on the Note 4, and to be honest, that's mainly what's dividing these two devices in terms of functionality. Camera quality has seen a big improvement from the Note 3 to the Note 4. Samsung has added optical image stabilization to the Note 4's 16 megapixel rear camera, which will be very helpful while recording video or taking pictures. I have nothing to complain about in this area. Both cameras do have the ability to record up to UHD quality video, but the stabilization in the Note 4 makes a huge difference. Picture quality is on point between these two devices, and in my opinion, the 3 megapixel difference between the Note 3 and the Note 4 won't be too noticeable for most people. Camera modes are slightly different on each device, but nothing you'll miss too much with either one. The 3.7 megapixel front-facing camera on the Note 4 is far superior over the Note 3's 2 megapixel camera. Images from the Note 4's front camera will be noticeably cleaner than its predecessor, and Samsung allows you to use the heart rate sensor on the back as a shutter button. We also have a new wide selfie mode for the front-facing camera that will take 120 degree panoramic photos with a slight rotation of the device. It's obvious that Samsung has taken a focus on camera capabilities, multitasking, and S Pen features with this iteration of the Note line. If you're not into some of the small features found in TouchWiz that are mostly present on both devices, these these three categories along with the hardware redesign should make for a great upgrade to the Galaxy Note 4. On the other hand, most of what makes the Note 4 so functional is dictated by its software. I'm not sure how heavy these features rely on the updated specifications, but I'd assume it would be possible for Samsung to port some of them over to the Note 3. Obviously that's not going to happen, but if you don't care about the new build quality and camera improvements, are the new software features enough to make you upgrade? 
Let me know what you think with a comment down below. Samsung is moving in the right direction with the Note 4, and I hope to see these design changes carry over with the Galaxy S6 and future Samsung smartphones and tablets. I hope I've loaded you with enough information to make an informed decision between the Galaxy Note 3 and Galaxy Note 4. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a thumbs up as it does help out the channel a lot, and if you're not already, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching everyone. This is Dom and have a great day.